We made it! Thank you so much for coming out. We're officially here. Take a seat. Take a seat. Let's do this thing, everybody. Take a seat. What is happening, everybody? I'm Trevor Noah. Welcome to The Daily Show. And not just any Daily Show. We're coming to you from the Tabernacle Theater in Atlanta, Georgia, everybody. We made it! We're here in Atlanta. That's right, baby. A-Town, hot Atlanta. I love it. Black Hollywood, the place with the realest housewives. The lost city in the ocean. No, that's Atlantis, but still, same feeling. We're here. Oh, and I can feel it. You feel amazing. This feels good. This feels really good. Oh, I'm excited for this. This is great. We're gonna be here all week. All week we're gonna be here, right? And if you're asking why, that's because, you know, that's how long our layover is. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. It's because Georgia is the epicenter of America's elections right now, yeah? Decided everything. Decided the presidential race. Now it could decide the midterms. And I know, I know there are a few other states, I know there are, but none of them have the best food, right? So, I'm loving the food out here. Everything is extra, I love it. Yeah, you got, you got that southern fried chicken, you know? You got that fried okra, you got, you got fried tomatoes. Everything is fried. Even, even some of your politicians' brains are fried. I like that. You went too far, but I like that. The point is, we're in Atlanta, and I'm loving, can I tell you, I am loving every single moment out here. Everything, you know? The, like, like the, yeah, the vibe, is, the vibe is different. You got good people. You got great music. You know, everyone here is so polite as well. Yeah. Yeah, in New York, people are like, what the f is wrong with you? But here everyone's just like, bless your heart. Bless your heart. And I know, I know it means the same thing, but it feels different, you know? It feels completely different. Oh, and can I just say, can I just say, one of the things I've been loving most about being here is how black it is. What? What? I landed in Atlanta. I thought I flew back to South Africa by mistake. I was like, there's black people everywhere. It's like opposite Boston. I've never been anywhere like this in South Africa. This is wild. From the moment we land, like the moment I landed at the airport, it's just black people everywhere. Everyone was black. You get in the car, your Uber driver is black. Everyone in the hotel was black. I get into the room, I turn on the TV. The news anchor is black. Throws, throws to a black weatherman then crosses over to like a black sports reporter. I walk into the bathroom, I look in the mirror, that person's black, I was like, what? And you can feel it, you can feel it in the city because everyone complains, they're like, oh, Atlanta has so much traffic, Trevor. Have you felt the traffic? Have you felt what it's like? I have, but the blackness changes that too. This is the only city I've been to where the traffic has rhythm. <laughs> You can feel the trap, even when you, you're moving forward and back, it's just like, it's got like a little, like it's like a like, stop and then it's go, and then it's like, stop and then it's go, and you're like, what are we, are we doing, what's happening right here? And you're like, oh, I'm gonna change lanes, I'm gonna change lanes, you're like, oh no, I'm gonna go back to that lane, and you're like, ah, oh, what's happening right now? What, what kind of traffic is this? Who's gonna merge, you're gonna merge here? And it's like, no, 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 you're not gonna let me merge? Well, bless your heart, sir, bless your heart. But as I said, as I said, the reason we're here, the real reason we're here is because we wanted to feel what it's like to be on the ground in a state that everyone is looking to as election day approaches, everyone, right? And you can feel it, you can feel it. I mean, you, you all live here, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you can't even forget election day is coming. Every single ad, every single ad is political now. Every ad, every billboard is political. Everything, every flyer. Every spam text that you get, everything is political. Yeah. It's Halloween today. I bumped into a kid on the street dressed as Frankenstein. I was like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, the real monster is actually inflation. <laughs> this three musketeers feels like a two musketeers. <laughs> and as you know, there are two big races, two major races that everybody's watching, right? Two major races. First up, the governor's race, of course. Yes. With the seats. The seat currently occupied by Republican Brian Kemp, who's leading in the polls right now. Yeah. What was that? 
Is that for Halloween? Is that why you're booing? Is that what that is? Yeah, and he's running on a platform of making it harder to get an abortion, but easier to get a gun. And despite his policies, Brian Kemp is seen as a moderate. That's what I find really interesting. Yeah? All because, all because he refused to help Donald Trump overturn the election, which is good, don't get me wrong, but that's how extreme politics has gotten in America, right? He's like, I don't think we should hang Mike Pence. And people are like, wow, this guy's got some moderate views. Yeah, he's a real moderate politician. But of course, the person trying to stop Kemp from getting a second term is the one and only Stacey Abrams. Right? Who, by the way, who, by the way, does it all. She writes books. She's a voting rights activist who played a big part in turning Georgia blue in 2020. And, and it turns out, it turns out, she even has a budding acting career. Yeah. Today, we greet the president of United Earth. I'm so pleased that you've come. Okay, I see you, Miss Abrams. I see you set phases to cameo, hey! It's great, it's great to see that Stacey Abrams has gone boldly where no one has gone before, Paramount Plus. I like that. Now, we're gonna be chatting to Miss Abrams, right, later on in the show, so we'll get back to that. But, but right now, right now, let's focus on a Senate showdown that has ramifications even beyond Georgia. Right? And it's between, it's between Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican candidates, and the Republican candidates, Herschel Walker. Yes. Now, now Warnock's campaign is focused on abortion rights and uh, expanding infrastructure, right? But as election day gets closer, I feel like his campaign ads are now more focused on, on making sure that the race doesn't go any longer than it has to. Guess who's coming to Thanksgiving? Mom, we brought a friend. That's right. I could be interrupting your Thanksgiving because if nobody gets 50% of the vote, there'll be a runoff and nobody wants that to happen. I'm Raphael Warnock and we don't have to mix politics and Thanksgiving. That's why I approve this message. Now, can you pass the sweet potatoes? <laughs> Can I just say, that is the most convincing way to get people to vote. If you don't vote, politicians are gonna come to your house and hang out. <laughs> Can you imagine politicians just showing up on Thanksgiving like, ha, I'm Herschel Walker. It's like, oh, hi, dad, uh, wrong house, wrong house. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, I, I really need to understand that. What, what, is, what is going on in Georgia that R Reverend Raphael Warnock is neck and neck with Herschel Walker? What, what is happening? Like, I know, I know Walker is all neck, but what, what, is, what is happening? But every second thing the man says turns out to be a lie, right? He walks around with a, a fake police badge, yeah? He pretended he was an FBI agent, right? He claimed he was anti-abortion, even though he apparently paid for one. He, he claimed he had only one kid, even though he has like a thousand. Oh, and, and he told people he graduated in the top 1% of his class at the University of Georgia, and then it turned out he never graduated at all, at all. Like, at this point, I want to meet the Herschel Walker that Herschel Walker thinks he is. <laughs> right? Because at this point, at this point, everything is like, he treats real life the way we treat dating apps. <laughs> you know, just like in your profile, like, I'm one of the tallest people you'll ever meet. I founded my own industry and my mom lives with me, not the other way around, yeah. But the bigger thing about Herschel Walker for me isn't all the lying and the hypocrisy. He's also just weird. He's a strange guy. You know? Like, and if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, watch him give one of my favorite answers ever in politics, right? This is what he said when he was asked about the biggest problem facing America today. What do you see as some of the big, biggest problems going on in our country today? I think some of the biggest problems going on in our country today, we have so many celebrities telling people that they can't do it telling a lot of people, oh, you know, it's, you can't do it. Like, you gotta feel bad for yourself, feel sorry for yourself, which is sad to me because when they, made it, 
you know, they've done it, but they're telling you you can't do it. And it's like, God, you did it. Why they can't do it? Okay. <laughs> First of all, that was the sleepiest interview I, I've ever seen. It's like, it's like if Ambien had a podcast. Uh, what was that? The only reason those two should be in the same room is if Ben Carson is doing brain surgery on Herschel Walker. There's no other reason they should be talking to each other. No, because I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He says the biggest problem, the biggest problem that America's facing right now is celebrities telling people they can't do it. The biggest problem? The biggest problem. You think the average American right now is saying, I know inflation is bad right now, but the bigger issue is that Vin Diesel has never told me to follow my dreams. I could have owned a bakery by now. Could have been baking for family. And look, and look, I get it, I get it, all right? Some people will be like, you're a celebrity, you're not objective. Well, I guess so, maybe I'm missing something here. You know, maybe I am. And so, and so if I am, in case I've been too discouraging <laughs> to the American people. L let me say this. In America, you can do anything. Just like Herschel Walker. If you want to be an FBI agent, you claim you're an FBI agent. If you want to graduate valedictorian, just tell people that it happened because it did. If you want to be the father of one despite having fathered four, then by God, be the father of one despite having fathered four children. That is the American way. Yeah. The point is, there are many major races that are going on this year, and they're really close. You know this. America knows this, right? A week from now, Herschel Walker might actually be claiming victory. I mean, he'll be doing that no matter what, but he could actually win for real. And that's why with one week until the election, the Democrats have pulled out the big guns. Yeah, Netflix's very own Barack Obama. <laughs> this race is so important. It even got Obama off the beach. He was down here in Georgia over the weekend and he brought that Obama swag with him. Some of you may not remember, but Herschel Walker was a heck of a football player. But, but, but here's the question. Does that make him equipped? to weigh in on the critical decisions about our economy and our foreign policy and our future. Let, 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 let's do a thought experiment. Let's say you're at the airport and you see Mr. Walker and you say, hey, there's Herschel Walker, Heisman winner. Let's have him fly the plane. <laughs> You'd want to know, does he know how to fly an airplane? Wow. Wow, really? Really, President Obama, really? You're gonna say that about a man who graduated in the top 1% of pilot school? How dare you? A lot of people don't know this about me, Herschel, but I was in Top Gun. That movie was about me. My name in the 80s was Pete Maverick. I love how Obama roasts you <laughs> with like that signature swag. He makes it sound so polite, but he's roasting the shit out of you. Uh, the last time I checked, uh, you didn't have any brains. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun to see Obama at it again, wasn't it? Huh? People always love seeing him come out. You know, gets the crowd fired up, gets everybody excited. You know? That's what you get from him in a race. You know, that's why they don't send Joe Biden. You know, you, you don't get the same thing from him. It's true. I, Joe Biden wants to do it. He's always like, oh, I'll go give a speech. And everyone's like, no, no, please, sir, please. <laughs> You're needed in Washington. There's a 1,000 piece puzzle we need your help on. You go on, you go on, sir. He's like, I, I used to know a guy named Puzzle. Yes, you did, sir. Yes, you did, go on. You just solved that, sir. So at the end of the day, it's all gonna come down to the votes. All right, who votes, who doesn't? Which is gonna be a little bit harder. I don't need to tell you this, but you know this, because last year, Georgia state Republicans passed a very controversial bill, right? It was a law, SB 202, which created all kinds of new obstacles to voting. Fewer drop boxes, shorter absentee voting windows, uh, and it's even illegal to hand water to people waiting in line. Yeah. I mean, luckily you can still hand out Dasani, because legally that's considered sewage, but <laughs> at that point, I mean, people would rather die of thirst. Now, Georgia Republicans claim that this bill was about voter fraud, 
But we all know the real motivation, right? And they say it's about fraud, right? It was about trying to suppress the voter turnout. We get it, we get it. I mean, because at some point, they even tried to limit early voting on a Sunday. All right, why Sunday? We know why, because of souls to the polls, all right? They have an organization that makes sure that they get people going straight from church on a Sunday to go and vote. Yeah. And I gotta say, that's particularly messed up. How are you gonna take that away? Sunday voting was the one day when black church was only five hours instead of 10. <laughs> but can I tell you what I've loved about being here in Georgia is watching the news and realizing that the voter suppression strategy might have backfired because it turns out, it turns out all these new restrictions are just motivating Georgians to vote even harder. Georgia continues to see a record turnout for early voters in a midterm. So far, more than 1.6 million people have already cast their votes in Georgia, and election officials expect that number to surpass the 2 million mark this week. I think a lot of people are really motivated for a bunch of different reasons, um, and I think democracy is definitely on the table. People have fought for us to have the right to vote, so we are persistent about coming to vote early. You know, a lot of people have lost their lives for us to have that privilege uh, to come out and voice our opinion. I would have came out if it was snow on the ground, I would have came out to vote. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. The voter suppression people thought that they could stifle the vote, but all they've done is motivate people to vote earlier than ever. And let me tell you something. That's how you know. That's when you know you've messed up and you've made black people angry. When we arrive early to some shit, that's when you know <laughs> some shit's about to go down. When black people are like, hey, hey man, you're only supposed to get here at 12 and say 11.30. It's like, yeah, but we need to handle some shit first. Why are you early? You about to find out. You about to find out. Let's kick things off with the big news of the day, right? Starting with Elon Musk, the guy who always looks like a ghost, whether it's Halloween or not. <laughs> for months now, for months now, Musk has said that he wanted to own Twitter, right? And the reason he wanted to own Twitter is because he wanted to make sure that it became a haven for free speech, all right? He wanted to change it to that, because let's be honest, up until now, you know, people have really held back on Twitter. <laughs> You know, I always, I always find myself scrolling and thinking, but what do you really think? Why are you so reserved, sir? So anyway, on Thursday, the, the day Elon officially took over, right, we got a taste of this extra free speech, right? Because in the first 12 hours under Elon's ownership, the use of the N-word on Twitter shot up 500%. 500%. Which, no, you don't, you don't know, you don't know. Who knows what it is? It could be racist, yeah, it could be. Could be, right? Just who feel free and feel emboldened to say it now, right? Or it could be black people watching Elon take over like this nigga. <laughs> you don't know which one it is. You're not sure. You're not sure. Because he's going crazy. Here's my question. Here's my question. I, I, really, wa I really want to know this. Why is it always when, when the free speech people, right? All these people are like, we want free speech. Why, why do they never want to use their free speech to say words like perambulate or, or pusillanimous? Like, it's never stuff like that. Have you noticed? They're like, we want free speech. We want free speech. You're like, okay, what do you want to say? Nigger. <laughs> like, really? All the things you could have said in the world, every word, everything you could have spoken about, all the issues you, what do you want to say? Then any other word? Mm, niggers. <laughs> He's like, he doesn't want free speech. You just want to hate on people, right? So yeah, it looks like Elon is, uh, he's scrambling. He's scrambling to figure out, you know, how to, how to make this whole thing work. Because remember, he spent $44 billion. Well, he was forced to spend $44 billion because it was a troll that turned into a real, he used his free speech and he paid a big price. <laughs> and it's going to be hard to make money from this thing. You know, Twitter has a lot of debt, right? They're not profitable as a company. You know, and so today, to try and mitigate this, Elon Musk came out and he said he's gonna start charging people $8 a month to be verified with a blue check mark next to their name. <laughs> yeah, $8 a month for the blue check mark. Because I guess he's hoping that everyone else on Twitter will also make terrible financial decisions like he did. <laughs> no, because what, I'm sorry, $8, what do you, what are you spending $8 a month for? Like the blue check, you realize what you get with $8 a month, you can subscribe, you can get like Netflix, you can get Paramount Plus, you can get Hulu, or 
or you can pay so that people verify that they're actually shitting on you. <laughs> right, it's just like, oh, this is the real Trevor Noah? I hate this guy, yeah! <laughs> oh, what was even funnier was the reason. This is the reason Elon Musk gave. He said the reason he's doing this, the reason he's doing it, is because he's sick of Twitter's current lords and peasants system for who has or who doesn't have a blue check mark. And then he ended it with power to the people, blue for eight dollars a month. <laughs> so here's my question. If you're trying to create equality on Twitter, why charge anyone to be verified? Huh? Yeah, just give everyone a, a blue check mark then. Why are you charging the people? Give it to everyone for free, or give it to no one, give it to no one, right? But it doesn't make sense to offer it as equality and then put a price on it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? Can, you, can you imagine if MLK was out there like, I have a dream, <laughs> I have a dream, and I'll tell you all about it for $8.99 a month. <laughs> it wouldn't be the same thing. Oh, it's all about equality. No, you're trying to make money. I get it. Yeah. So I think this $8 a month thing is ridiculous. You know, if you ask me, if Elon Musk wants to make money from Twitter, what he should do, don't charge people for blue check marks. No, you know, charge white people to say the N-word. <laughs> Twitter will be the most profitable company in history. Racists are going to be taking out loans. I need a bit of extra cash. My neighbors are so goddamn loud. I could use this. What else is going on in the news? Oh, of course, of course. It's the story of that crazy dude. I'm sure you've all seen this by now. The crazy guy who uh, broke into Nancy Pelosi's house and then attacked her 82-year-old husband with a hammer. Now, you would assume, I would assume, probably all of you would assume that everyone, regardless of their politics, would be against hammering the elderly, right? You would assume that. <laughs> right. But apparently, no, but apparently things have changed because it turns out there are many Republicans who find this whole thing really funny. A lot of Republicans have public con publicly condemned the violence, but some are actually making jokes about it. Yeah, that's exactly right, Wolf. I mean, instead of this moment of unity, what we have seen is Republicans actually mocking Paul Pelosi and the attack. In fact, Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out some really crude memes making fun of Paul Pelosi and the incident that happened. And then you have Carrie Lake, who is the Republican candidate for Arizona governor, who had this to say at a campaign event earlier today. It is not impossible to protect our kids at school. They act like it is. Nancy Pelosi, well, she's got protection when she's in DC. Apparently her house doesn't have a lot of protection. <laughs> but. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, mega comedy is weird. I don't, I don't get the, you hear the, the joke about the old man who was almost killed? <laughs> that, that's it, that's the joke, that's the joke. <laughs> what, like, like, who are these, you know, you know what's, this is what's crazy to me. What's crazy to me is, these are the very same people, the very same people who are devastated and appalled because somebody was rude to Ted Cruz at a restaurant. <laughs> huh? These are the same people. They'll be like, this was at a restaurant. They were rude to Ted Cruz at a restaurant. <laughs> where people go to eat. And Ted Cruz goes to lick the napkins. <laughs> they were rude to him. This is America. And look, I, I get it. It's like, it's not all Republicans. I'm not saying it's all. Some Republicans think it's a joke. Uh, many other Republicans are not laughing, but not because they're being civil about it. No, they've chosen to turn this into a giant conspiracy theory, right? Yeah, they've, they've said this, there's a whole bunch of crazy conspiracies they've come up for, with for how, why this has happened, right? And then some of them have chosen to just dismiss it. They go like, oh, this is not a big deal. This is just the random kind of crime that happens if you live in a Democrat-run city. That's what they're saying. Which, which, is, which is weird, right? Because you tell me this is random? It's like a random, completely random, everyday crime, right? You, you're telling me some right-wing conspiracy theorist broke into Nancy Pelosi's house screaming, where's Nancy? <laughs> and you think that was a random crime? Yeah, because we've all experienced this, right? Yeah, 
He's walking down the street. Some random guy jumps out with a weapon. He's like, where's your wife, Nancy Pelosi? And you're like, what? I'm not even married. And he's like, oh, well, if you do get married one day, you look me up and you tell me where you live. And you're like, how will I even find you? He's like, oh, look me up on Twitter. I'll be verified. The midterms are on. You know, we've talked about this a little bit. There's ads everywhere in Atlanta. And, and every ad, every ad that I've watched in the city is a campaign ad right now. Everything. You know this. You've seen it. Like, I watched TV for 10 minutes last night, and I saw 30 minutes worth of ads. <laughs> and the thing, that's, the thing that stuck out to me was how most of them were mean as shit. Georgia would be different with Abrams. She pushed more COVID lockdowns, wanted businesses closed and kids locked out of schools. Abrams' crime plan? Eliminate cash bail. The same failed liberal scheme causing crime to surge in other states. Stacey Abrams and Raphael Warnock support aborting babies not just at six weeks, not just at 15 weeks when the baby can feel pain, but up to 40 weeks. Talk shows, magazine covers, television cameos. Celebrity Stacy, a perfect governor for liberal elites, just not hardworking Georgians. Damn. You know, you know, if, if, you, if you only knew Stacey Abrams from attack ads in Georgia, you would think she was Darth Vader combined with Thanos, combined with that asshole who cut you off in the traffic. Pure evil. Stacey Abrams does all of it. And by the way, I don't understand that last part. What, what was that? She's bad because she gets interviewed on TV shows? Like, look at this. What, what, what are they trying to say, huh? What is this about? What is this? Why is this in an attack ad? She hugs Trevor Noah, which means she wants to turn America into Africa. <laughs> Nothing wrong with hugging me. I give good hugs. I mean, on the flip side, this, this is good for me. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. No, because now I have a great excuse. Anytime I don't want to hang out with anybody, you know, they'll be like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm like, ah, oh, I would love to, but if we're seen together, it could be used in an attack ad. You know, yeah, if you ever choose to run for governor of Georgia, it's just going to spoil you. I can't do that to you, you know? Maybe you should just Uber home from surgery. I think it would be better. And it's not just in Georgia. This is the thing I've read. It's not just in Georgia. And it's not just mean in this moment, it's getting meaner every single day. Every campaign in America right now is flooding the airwaves with attack ads. Everyone, my opponent will raise your attack. My opponent will cut your health care. My opponent. And it's always that voice too, right? It's always that attack ad voice. I feel like you can say anything in that voice and it sounds terrible, you know? My opponent will donate his kidney to you. <gasps> that son of a bitch. Wait, what? I, I need a kidney. You know, if you ask me, Honestly, I think attack ads should be legal. Yeah, I mean it. I think attack ads should be legal. Not campaign ads, not campaign ads, attack ads. I'll tell you why. First of all, first of all, I think it's because they only drive up polarization and hate. That's what they do, right? And secondly, politicians should be earning your vote by telling you what they're gonna do, not just by shitting on other candidates. Just tell me what you'll do if you want me to vote. Don't tell me about the other person. Because you realize they're, they're auditioning for the job. We don't accept this shit in any other job, right? There's no other job where you can apply for it and then your resume isn't what you do. It's just a list of other reasons that the other people suck. You can't do that anywhere else. Yeah, you can't just be sitting there and be like, oh, what are my strengths? Well, I think you should be focusing on Anthony's weaknesses, yeah. That guy types with his index fingers, yeah. So when do I start? You realize that's not campaigning. That's not winning votes, right? It's not, it shouldn't be a part of democracy. It's basically the same strategy every R&B song from the 90s used. You remember that? Every song would just be some guy just coming out there like, girl, you know your man ain't treating you right. He never buys you flowers. He's never taken you to Disney World. She'd be like, well, uh, are you gonna take me to Disney World, girl? This ain't about me right now. This is about your man and how he ain't doing you right. And by the way, my car's in the shop, so uh, I might need to borrow yours. <laughs> like, it's, it's not helpful. It's not healthy. And here's the thing, here's the thing. It would be one thing 
if attack ads were just highlighting policy differences between candidates. I, my opponent wants to raise your taxes, but I want to lower them. That's, that's one thing. But that's not what attack ads do. Because like everything else in America, it has to be supersized. Left-wing politicians are pushing sexual agendas on our children. X-rated drag shows for kids. Pornography in elementary schools. Mehmet Oz doesn't want you to know about his deadly experiments on puppies. Katie Hobbs organized a mock slave auction. Katie Hobbs, guilty of racism. No one is safe with liberal Amelia Sykes. Babies have to watch their backs because of Tina Kotak. Tina Kotak, too extreme for Oregon. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Babies have to watch their backs? If you're a baby watching that, you are crapping your pants. More than usual, you are shitting yourself. I've, I've never seen an attack ad trying to scare babies. It was like, watch out babies. Tina Kodak is here. And now she's not. And now she's here. And now she's not. And now she's here. And by the way, I know, I know there's some people who are thinking right now, oh, but Trevor, don't I deserve to know the bad things uh, about someone who's running for office? Yes, I think you do, I think you do. And ideally, you would get that information from America's responsible, objective news media. That's where you should be getting it from. It doesn't need to be in an attack ad, because here's the thing. Here's the thing, in my opinion, these ads are not helping. They don't help, they don't help, right? Because they don't just attack policy. They portray opponents as evil, inherently evil monsters. That poisons the entire country. Because what happens to bipartisanship after that? Do people ever think of that, huh? You, you can't be like, yes, I, I said my opponent wants to drink the blood of children, but now that the election is over, that doesn't mean we can't work together on infrastructure. <laughs> Get on in here, you pedophile, let's do this deal. You can't do that. Why would anyone support that? And what's even worse is that many attack ads are just straight up lies, right? Straight up lies. Like for instance, um, there, there's, a, there's an ad in uh, Texas, Greg Abbott put out this ad, right? A TV ad that spliced together different quotes from Beto O'Rourke to make it seem like he said something that he didn't say, right? Yeah, campaign flyers in uh, North Carolina, they show candidates wearing defund the police t-shirts that they never actually wore. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, as long as you're photoshopping pics, why not go all the way? Just go all the way. Yeah, just be like, look, he's not just throwing out a garbage bag, he's throwing out the new Taylor Swift album. You monster. There's drinking children's blood and then there's evil. Oh, and if you wanna see just how bad the lies in these ads can get, look no further than this race in California. We wanna show you perhaps the most dishonest TV campaign ad we've ever seen. Some politicians think they should control your child's education. We're trying to indoctrinate our students in communism. Jay Chen is running for Congress to represent Southern Californians. Here's what Chen actually said. You know, I'm going to be a recipient of some of these attacks, unfortunately. They're going to be claiming that because our school district was teaching Chinese, that meant we were trying to indoctrinate our students in communism. Literally, that will be one of the points of attack. Huh? Look at that. He even called it. He said, these people are probably gonna claim that we're teaching kids communism. And I guess his opponents saw that and they were like, well, that's a great idea, we should do that. Yeah, we should do that. Because here's the thing, it's bad enough. It's bad enough to attack someone, but to pretend they said something they didn't say and attack them for that, that's, that's even worse. You're attacking them for something they didn't say. You realize if you edit it, the context is out of everything, right? That, that Cardi B song, WAP. That's a song about female sexual empowerment. But if you edit out the P, now it's just a song about wet ass. <laughs> no one's gonna be dancing in the club to that song. <laughs> Get a bucket and a mop for this wet ass. Oh, please do not back that thing up on me. You can't do that. It's not good for democracy. And and here's the thing that, that may blow your mind, I know because it, it blew mine, is that it's not illegal to line attack ads. Did you know this? Yeah, it is not illegal. The courts have said that the government cannot ban lying in political ads because it falls under free speech. Yeah, 
And look, maybe you agree. Maybe you're one of those people who thinks, oh, the government shouldn't get involved in policing what's true or false in ads. But here's the thing, it already does, right? If you lie in an ad for a car or, or, for, a, or for a cell phone or for even toilet paper, the FTC will ban that ad. Yeah, which is a weird set of priorities, right? Because if you lie in an election ad, that could undermine your democracy. But if you lie about how many sheets are in a roll of toilet paper, I mean, the worst that could happen is you end up with a wet ass. So, if you ask me, America has everything backwards. If there's one type of ad you're not allowed to lie in, it should be your political ads, right? Not only is that better for democracy, not only is it better for democracy, but it means you would be allowed to lie in commercial ads, and I think that would be funny as hell. Chef Boyardee says his beefaroni is quick and convenient, but 40% of all people who ate beefaroni immediately died. And the other 60% became transgender. And what's Chef Boyardee hiding under his hat? Is it critical race theory? He won't say. Chef Boyardee, wrong for dinner, wrong for America. Paid for by Concerned Citizens for SpaghettiOs. See, now that's what we need more. I can feel the city starting to seep into my bones. I can feel it, you know? It feels good, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to become more and more Atlanta. Even, even the way I say it, when I got here, every time I said it, I would say Atlanta. I would say Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta. And then I started noticing all of a sudden, I was like, Atlanta, Atlanta. The tea was gone. The tea started fading away. Yeah, by the time I leave, I'll just be like, Lana, Lana, Lana. Yeah, now I understand how mumble rap was invented here. I get it. You just try and shrink all the words. I get it now. Oh, and we've had so much fun. It has been so much fun. You know, we've eaten the food, we've gone out, we've seen the sights and the sounds. Yesterday we went out as a whole group. We went to Magic City, you know? Oh, yeah, I will say, worst magicians ever. Yeah. Only thing that disappeared was my money. And I will say, we came to Atlanta to have a good time, and I have not been disappointed. We have not been disappointed. In fact, we've been lucky that we came when we came, because this has been a really momentous week in that freedom has been achieved in Atlanta. And I think you know what I'm talking about. As of this week, the Atlanta Zoo has announced that people are once again allowed to bring their guns when they visit. And I was like, wow. You really don't mess around with Second Amendment in this town, huh? The whole South, even at the zoo, people are strapped. Yeah, just packing their lunch, being like, and bring the Glock, you never know. You never know. Just walking in like, yeah, now let's see that parrot say something. Say something! Rob, say something! Yeah, say something! Say something! Yeah, that's right. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, you're a pretty cool parrot. And you know, if you ignore all the terrible reasons, I mean, having guns at the zoo is actually a really great idea, you know? Think about it, think about how many times you've been disappointed. You go to the zoo, and what happens? The animals are sleeping when you get there. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> you just walk up to that enclosure, pa 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 pa. Ah, oh, the panda's awake now, look at him. Oh, look at him running for cover. You know, the only way you could get more exciting is if they said it's not just the people, right? They should go all the way. They should give the animals guns too. I think that's what we should do, right? I mean, they're the ones who are gonna be there. It's only, it's only fair to them. Give them guns as well. See what happens, huh? It's gonna be exciting. Every single exhibit is gonna turn into a Mexican standoff. You know, there's people walking in like, honey, 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 keep the kids behind me. Keep the kids behind me. Stay cool, stay cool. Penguins, stay cool. Hey, 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 slots, no sudden moves, no sudden moves. Snakes, let me see those hands. All right, nobody needs to go extinct today. Atlanta! Now, now look, obviously, obviously, other than the armed animals, the reason we're here and the reason we're excited to be here is because the midterms are around the corner, right? With everybody focusing on Georgia, five days away, and your races are coming down to the wire. Can I tell you, all right? Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock, neck and neck, which is wild. 
means that if something happens, Herschel Walker could be elected senator next week. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I also hope it doesn't happen. I mean, that would be crazy. Herschel Walker as a senator? You know, can you imagine how that would mess with the whole capital? You know, take your child to work, he's gonna feel like another insurrection. <laughs> he's just gonna be like, they're storming the capital. Oh, no, wait, wait, it's Herschel Walker's kids. It's all of his kids. He's like, allegedly my kids. <laughs> you know, this whole midterm campaign has gotten so extreme. It almost feels like Republicans are running a political science experiment just to see how crazy a candidate can be and still get people to vote for them. It almost feels like that. What can they do before people say, no, I wouldn't vote for them? It's, it's almost like Mitch McConnell just in the lab, you know, just working away like, all right, they voted for a Herschel Walker. Uh, let's try a bag of wet spaghetti next. Well, see if they go for that. And, and I don't know if you've seen this, but Herschel Walker has gone from beefing with uh, reality to beefing with Barack Obama. I don't know if you've seen this. Yeah, they've got a thing going back, because obviously Obama roasted him in Georgia, right, over the weekend, and then Walker shot back, shot back, that he could, quote, put his resume up against Obama's anytime. <laughs> and, first of all, it wouldn't even matter if Walker's resume was more impressive than Obama's because Obama's has a line in his resume that says, not crazy. <laughs> that carries a lot of weight in a job interview. But also, Obama was president. People, he was president for two terms. Herschel Walker can't even carry any of his pregnancies to two terms. What are you talking about? Are you serious right now? I'm, ki I'm kidding, his resume is impressive. I mean, any, any resume is impressive when you can just make it up, right? I was a cop, I was an FBI agent, a ballerina, I discovered nitrogen, I also am nitrogen, the list goes on and on. But yeah, Barack Obama is back on the campaign trail. He's back out there trying to get people whipped up, trying to get the people voting. All right, he's hitting all the swing states around the country. And last night, last night, both Obama and President Biden made big speeches about how there is a lot more at stake in this election than which party gets to use the good bathroom at the Senate. Folks can win if we don't do our part. And if you've got election deniers serving as your governor, as your senator, as your secretary of state, as your attorney general, then democracy as we know it may not survive in Arizona. That's not an exaggeration, that is a fact. This year, I hope you'll make the future of our democracy an important part of your decision to vote and how you vote. In our bones, we know democracy at risk is at risk. <laughs> what? what? I heard what he said, though. He said, in our bones, we know democracy. At that means we're screwed. Yeah, whenever an old person feels something in their bones, it means the storms are coming. I feel it in my bones. It's either that or osteoporosis, but I think it's a storm. By the way, I love seeing Biden and Obama both doing speeches back to back. No, because sometimes you think that you're imagining it. You're like, Obama had more energy, and then when you see it, you're like, no, they have very different energies that they bring. You know, it's almost like seeing a before and after of a NyQuil commercial, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying that like the one is better or worse. It's like the level of excitement, you know? Basically, Obama is the Beyonce concert, and then like Biden is the traffic on the way home. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it feels like. Actually, actually, you know what? Actually, Obama is like me, right? Before every dinner I had in Atlanta this week, and then Biden is like me after every dinner I had in Atlanta this week. Yeah, I would walk into Busy Bee, and I'd be like, let's do this. I'm gonna dominate this fried chicken plate. And then after, I'd be like, I did not feel confident <laughs> about the future of my stomach. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> but, but look, however they're saying it, However, they're saying it, Obama and Biden are making the same point. And it's a salient one. This election 
is about whether America wants to continue being a democracy, all right? And that's actually a tough sell, believe it or not. It really is. Because ironically, democracy isn't what's on people's minds right now, right? People are paying more for groceries. They're paying more for gas, all right? And Democrats are going, yeah, we know that sucks, but democracy! And voters are like, can I eat democracy? <laughs> can I fill my tank with democracy? It's a challenge, it really is. And it's a challenge, because if you think about it, humans, we, we didn't evolve like this, right? Humans didn't evolve to think long-term, right? If you think about it, we're designed to put long-term problems over immediate problems. That's just, that's just how we are, all right? The caveman who was worried about the saber-toothed tiger was worried about surviving. That guy survived, you know, saber-toothed tiger, survived. Well, the caveman who was sitting in the cave like, hmm, I wonder how we could make our hunting practices more sustainable. <laughs> that guy died, right? <laughs> he was right, but he died. <laughs> and this is one of the flaws of democracy. It's a, it's a weird flaw when you consider it, right? Because it's not just the fact that it, 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 it can fall at any time, but it's also the fact that the people who are anti-democracy can use democracy to get into power and then end democracy. And if you, if you want to see a silly example of how unpredictable voting can be, look, look at what happened when people got to vote on what their election sticker should look like. A sticker design contest that went viral this year is making good on its promise to an Ulster County team. A few months ago, the county's I Voted sticker contest made headlines. All great designs, but one just happened to get some national attention. <laughs> Hudson Rowan's design, you can see it right <laughs> oh there, my gosh. came away with more than 90% of the vote. Man, that is crazy looking. Officially awesome. becoming the county's new I Voted sticker for the 2022 November election. See? See? That's what can happen. And I mean, I do, I do love this, don't get me wrong. I've always wanted to see Rudy Giuliani's baby pictures, but, <laughs> but this is what can happen. And you heard what they said, you heard what they said. This sticker got 90% of the vote. You realize there's no politician who gets that kind of support, right? But you know, this competition got me thinking. People go so crazy over these stickers that in fact, I think we should use that, you know? What we should do is we should use that energy. There's so many people who only vote for the sticker. I know some people who are like, oh, I can't wait to vote so I can get the sticker. You're like, what about the election? Ah, I just want that sticker. <laughs> Maybe we should use that enthusiasm to save that democracy, right? You can use it to save democracy. In addition to an I voted sticker, from now on, they should also have an I accept the results of the election sticker, yeah? That way, that way the day after the election, when somebody is like, you know, the vote was stolen by robot pedophiles, you'd be like, ah, you, you want this sticker? <laughs> I'm like, oh, Mike Pence is lucky. I like stickers more than his neck. I'll take it. Before we go, I wanted to remind you, the midterm elections are approaching and the stakes are higher than they've been in generations. So make sure your voice counts. Make your early voting plan at voteearly.org.